Okay, so I bought a Raspberry Pi uh, to install Pi Hole. I keep getting interrupted trying to record these. Um, so I, I got a Raspberry Pi. I used a can of kit. It had a a case for it and charger and SD. I used a Raspberry Pi 4 as 4 gigs. More than I would ever need. Probably 2 gigs would have been 5. Maybe even 1 gig. Um, I installed... It came with an SD card already flashed for um, for the noobs or whatever. So you just turn it on and it have a selection of uh, Raspberry Pi to install different distros. So one was a GUI. There's a few versions with a GUI, Debian versions, and I chose the Raspberry Pi Lite because I was going to use it as a Pi hole, which is a DNS sinkhole. So, the domains on the block list, there's 5 million. It doesn't come with 5 million. It comes with 95,000, which should be sufficient. I think maybe 5 million might be a bit much. But, um, I use a DHCP reservation, so it's always get 192.168.0.2. I installed Raspberry Pi, and I installed Unbound. So, I have my own recursive DNS server that should speed things up. Uh, whenever a uh, DNS request has, has its own cache on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, so I don't have to reach out to all the way to Google to get answers. The Unbound should do that for me. And then the Raspberry Pi has a block list for the ad blocker. Um, and then because there's no GUI, I have to SSH HN. So uh, I, I got the SSH started by plugging it into a monitor and a keyboard and then going into the settings from there uh, so there was a little uh, display where I could select to make turn the SSH on uh, but that's not what we're going to be looking at so I installed the ply hole and we want to get to the admin go to 192.168.0.2 slash admin log in and it would start off with this got 95,000 there's a few things we can go over uh, first thing we can go to audit log and I've already clicked audit and the audit gets rid of it from here so uh, allowed queries click audit gets rid of it from the list but if there's something that's really uh, popular and that you know you need um, crumbs from robinhood.com what it's coming from my cell phone probably um, whatsapp Anyways, you can whitelist it if it's breaking something, which is important. And you can see if there's something that you really, really need. Uh, or if something's always tracking you, let's see it over here as well. Uh, the query list to come over here, I can look up uh, whatever I want. So let's say Robin Hood. Where does that come up on my lists? Uh, DBLOISD.NL. This is a very popular one. Um... From the list, I have a book bookmark here. Here's a lot of lists that people usually recommend. Uh, this OISD uh, brings its own list, domain block lists. And uh, you can use this one. It's got about 400,000 or so. Uh, there's also uh, DevBlog Dan, and where you would add those, you go to group management, go to add list, and this goes to all the add lists. So uh, what I did is I went to these, not the ones with the names crossed out, but I would just select all these, click C, come in here, paste it, and click add, and it'll add them all at once. It'll add them like that. Uh, did, it just, did it just recently add them? Um, I don't think so. I think I was already there, so it said it added them when it was, they were already there. Uh, for example, uh, when help. When help. Where is when help? And it's in there somewhere. Um, anyways, this is how I got them all to... Uh, updated. Uh, Stephen Black host raw GitHub is the original, um, and then I added developer Dan. 
And, and in fact, we could probably disable the rest of these. And we can just stick with DBOS ID, or even developer Dan. We can click disable the rest of these and see how it works. I wonder if there's a way to mass disable these, but. Simple malvertising, we'll leave that one on. Uh, but these were included as well from the fire blog. Uh, the green ones are supposed to be great to leave, and the blue ones might break some stuff. You can add along as well. And I'm not too sure about how often these repeat themselves. Um, and I'm also not too sure... One more page. I'm not too sure... Uh, I think then I think I have to to update this. We want to go to tools, update gravity, update. This will update all your list. Uh, there's a cron uh, cron tab, a cron job, every Sunday to update the list for you. My dog's eating some food. There we go. And my domains are now down to 500,000. And I'm still betting this is still going to be pretty good. Because we come down here to block domains. What's mostly being uh, queried is Microsoft and Amazon. And then for the first four. For like, uh, let's say, 75 to 14,000, 16,000, 18,000. 18,000 queries. Um just for trackers on Amazon and, My and Microsoft, mostly Microsoft, then Google Ad Services, CloudFront, that's for DH uh, an HTTPS, I'm not too sure, Ad Double Click's very popular, Honey, Google, and what, what are the most, to me, so API, Amazon, Alexa, I have an Alexa in the house, that's sending a lot of info over to Amazon, uh, Google's popular, and we can see Facebook apparently is really popular in this house. And this is for the whole household. Um, and this is localhost 53335. So that is the unbound server. We'd go over here. Uh, we'd go to settings. Excuse me. Go to DNS. And we can easily just click and you can add a DNS server. So I want to add Google. I'd click that. Um, and then for... The local host is that's obviously local host, and then the unbounds map to 5335 because all of these servers on the DHCP are mapped are mapped to go to 192.168.0.2. So when the DHCP, when someone says I need an IP address, it sends this out. And that's also why I use DHCP reservations uh, when it connects to the network. It says this IP address is always for this one, and it's also going to get this DNS address. So it queries this, and then this queries itself, uh, the query on um, port 53 for DNS on the network, and then this port here, because it's listening to 53 for request for a device to the network, you can't do that twice for the DNS. So it queries, it asks for the unbound on port 5335, and then the unbound DNS is the one that's reaching out to the internet and caching the objectives, objectives, domains. Uh, and how effective is it? Um, it's not terribly great. You can also see which computers are doing what. This is the computer I'm currently on. You can clearly see it is the most popular on the network. Between 100 to 200 something, 250 probably, is the DHCP. So these are mobile devices. Um, and then I'll probably go through and give these uh, individual IP addresses so you can see uh, I can keep track of what's doing what because every time they they disconnect, come back, they're gonna have a different IP address, and I won't know who's doing what. It's a little sketchy. I'm, I'm able to see exactly what each device is asking for on the network. So as you can see, it's it uh, 151. This is computer right now. Clients to Google. Uh, try to Beacons Five. Safe browsing Brave. I use Brave Browser. This is Google Chrome, um, but I have Brave Browser as well. 
so uh, that's how that that works. And uh, there's one last thing to show um, how effective it is. So let's. I I can't always tell. So we're we're gonna go over here to tools, tail, and then you can see requests as they come up. So right now we're just sitting here, nothing, right? I just showed something. Uh, let's go to msn.com. And then you can see um, uh, the log. See, bing.com blocked it. SRTB blocked it. And there's still ads. Woo. Here's the thing, though. I got an ad blocker on over here. Let's pause it. It does not... The, the pie hole doesn't block all the ads. And this is with 500,000. Reload with it off. Oh, jeez. Is it working now? Nice. I couldn't get this working the other day. Like, it still had an ad. Well, this is an ad here. But that's part of the website. Um... All right, I got to go. That's ad blocker.